Hi, my name is Harrison Speck, and I'm a first year SEPA fellow. And today I'm going to talk to you about my perspective on Child Protective Services caseworker turnover in Texas using uh, systems thinking. I'll first explain a little bit about the problem and then give some of the previously attempted solutions. And then I will explain what I learned using systems thinking to analyze the solutions, the problems, and the structure of the, the way the caseworkers operate. Uh, lastly, I will uh, offer some basic guidelines of, for a plan of action, including one aspect of the system that needs more attention. So caseworker turnover has been a significant problem in the US. The nature of the job is difficult itself. Uh, it entails facing abuse and neglect of children on a daily basis. It involves uh, handling families that are fearful that their children are being taken away or uh, that they're angry that their children have been taken away. It involves subject matters like drug abuse, like domestic violence, like uh, cycles of sexual abuse. It's just very difficult to work with. Uh, and the average caseworker leaves within two years. Uh, it's, that's often the defined measurement of, of turnover. Uh, and in some regions, the turnover is 90%. Uh, the resulting turnover affects child permanency, which is the goal of the whole agency. Uh, I'm going to focus on Texas Child Protective Services as, an ex as a specific example. Uh, each state uh, has its own climate, but basically all of the states have the sim similar issues because of the subject matter. And I have experience with CPS in Texas uh, through my de uh, Department of Family and Protective Services, uh, and I never worked as a caseworker, but I regularly interacted with caseworkers for about three years. And uh, in Texas, they, they handle about 250,000 cases a year. And in uh, 2013, the Stevens Group report uh, found that 43% of the caseworkers left within 24 months. Uh, so it's kind of a problem. Uh, the average cost for each caseworker is $54,000 to the state. Uh, they ended up spending $240 million this last year trying to bolster CPS workers uh, and reduce caseload. So uh, there have been many efforts to combat turnover. Uh, and in 2009, studies recommended lower caseload, uh, hiring ahead of vacancies, providing a better internal career path, and raising public awareness. Two additional reports last year recommended another set of solutions, including policy streamlining, increased pay, performance evaluation, better training, mentoring, and uh, I believe just hiring better workers, <laughs> which actually is true. Uh, but uh, so some of the assumed problems based upon these solutions uh, are those. Uh, and this is not like, these are, these are not all of the problems, but uh, this is enough to give uh, uh, an example of, of how we can go about get, uh, tackling them. Uh, so each solution, solution seems like it would make a dent in, in turnover. But the problem was that uh, in 2006, the state spent $200 million uh, on increasing the salaries of caseworkers and on decreasing the caseload to only 22 cases. That was about half of what it was. Uh, and the result was a 7% increase in turnover the next year, uh, which is not a good thing. Uh, so why? Uh, and it's because the two solutions were not systemic. Uh, systems thinking uses DSRP, uh, distinctions, systems, relationships, and perspectives, which I'm sure you guys all know, uh, <laughs> Uh, to implement a map and, wic and uh, map out a wicked problem in order to discover new approaches and solutions. The quickest explanation I could think of is a Rubik's Cube. That each side is its distinct part, but the sides together make a system. And each side relates to the other side, so if one side is moved, the other side is affected. And lastly, in order to find a solution, each side's perspective must be uh, understood and explored. With wicked problems, the cube is much larger. And to make things more difficult, many problems like caseworker turnover involve timing. So these problems must be, must be solved in tandem. So let's look at caseload as an example. Uh, it's, an, it's a feedback loop between caseload and turnover. So the more turnover, the higher the caseload, uh, which results in workers becoming frustrated and leaving. So that results in even more turnover. Uh, these, uh, basically, uh, the solution is to reduce caseload, it seems. But the problem is that you can factor in more, more issues. So poor performance impacts both caseworker turnover and caseload. So caseworkers case are discouraged uh, because they're not doing the job as well as they think they could. Uh, and that results in casework being delayed. It results in larger caseloads. And then it results in more turnover. And then you add in uh, lack of experience. So in 2006, one third of the workers were new. So basically, they were, they were trying to learn something that takes years and years to, to figure out. 
uh, and that resulted in poor performance, which resulted in high, higher caseload, which resulted in more, turno more turnover. Uh, and then you can actually just keep going, and it becomes more dizzying as to trying to figure out how to sol solve this. And so what I realized was that uh, basically all of the, uh, like what we need is a comprehensive and coordinated approach. Uh, and we need to solve all these issues all at once. And the web of interconnected uh, issues can be more simply visualized as that. Uh, each piece contributes to turnover and each ca is caused either directly or indirectly by turnover. Each is a side to the wicked problem. But these problems don't exist in a void. They involve multiple actors in a cycle of processes uh, that make up pace work. A state government defines regulations, overall goals and funding. Administration defines field policies, hiring practices and caseloads. The direct work environment supervises and trains workers and caseworkers are experienced or inexperienced, educated or uneducated. And the relationship between these actors is crucial in understanding uh, turnover. Not only their relationship, but their perspective on each other and on the, on the problem. Uh, as I began to map out the major actors involved, I realized with one exception, two actors were missing from the list. And those are, that's the public and clients. Uh, the clients are implied in, in some solutions, like lowering caseload, but their relationship with the caseworkers isn't really explored. Uh, the client's treatment of the caseworker impacts the success of the, of the case, but it also impacts the, the caseworker and their motivations. So using Metamaps, uh, this is the, the final one. Uh, basically using Metamaps, I attempted to articulate the system uh, caseworkers function or don't function in, uh, and this got messy, and I can't really go into the details, but I can give you one aspect that I, I found uh, very interesting. And that is uh, going back to the Rubik's Cube idea. Uh, if you, you couldn't solve a Rubik's Cube if you didn't know how many sides there were and uh, what each side looked like. And so I think that one of the biggest aspects that they're missing uh, in trying to solve this problem is the public opinion and the effect of media. And uh, me the media basically portrays CPS in a negative light because that's what makes news. Uh, and uh, caseworkers see that and they're directly impacted by that. But clients and uh, the public are also impacted by that. So CPS is basically covered in a dark cloud all the time and caseworkers, it affects caseworkers' lives throughout. So it affects their families, their relationships with their friends, their coworkers, everyone. Uh, it also impacts uh, not only tenured workers or current workers, it also impacts prospective workers. So it's very difficult to recruit people because of that. And so uh, the system of basically in conclusion, the system of, of protecting children is very flawed. Uh, it's deeply flawed, but none of, the, none of this will get solved if without a dedicated workforce. Uh, and caseworkers are on the front lines, and it is important for us as the public to understand and recognize the difficulties of their jobs. Uh, I think that uh, the one thing that you can do is if you know a caseworker, if you meet a caseworker, thank them, because they haven't been thanked enough. And just to conclude, the two main ideas uh, from my exploration of systems thinking are to make lasting solutions include all actors in comprehensive planning and coordinated implementation, and uh, public opinion matters a lot. Overall, systems thinking helps to understand the complexity of a situation and seek out lasting solutions. Uh, over the past decades, caseworkers have been leaving the job, and despite millions of dollars and countless studies, the problem has not decreased. A more cohesive systemic approach might be a solution. Thanks.